I can record it. Oh, okay. I think that's probably, oh, Natasha, yay, hello. I think that's probably everyone back. Um, we're going to hand over to John in a moment, but let's just have, let's just say just two examples of where you clearly and effectively used your authority, your God-given authority in the week. Is there anybody who'd like to volunteer? And we just, I know there isn't time to hear from everyone, but just two. Tina, are you just flat flashing your pencil or you or you saying you've got an example? You're on mute. So we've got to score like it's, this. It's um it, I was flashing my pencil, but I think in prayer um I've used the authority. Okay. That's brilliant. Absolutely. And what what kind of prayer did you pray? Um I, I've, I've been praying about the youth, which we were doing uh, at the meetings anyway, but I've been doing it for a long while. So sort of in that respect about bringing things, well, change of atmosphere in, in um, Havering, really. Amen. So, That's brilliant. Okay, thank you. And let's have one more. Anybody who could share a specific... I can't see you all, so you might have to just... Anybody? I can go here though. Okay, thank you. So one of the ladies at work um, has been going through some stuff with the anxiety and that. So with prayer, um, that helps lift and shift the burden. The other thing is also with, I send like a praise and worship song, something that's upbeat, but it's word based in the morning. So it gets and kickstarts the mind to shift it in a different place. So that's some of the things we've been doing. And then just also help him focus on gratitude. What are you grateful for? You know, to switch that. So that's what we've been doing. And that's just one example. Yeah, that is brilliant. Thank you. So there you've, we've mentioned prayer, shifting the atmosphere, thankfulness, praise, all of those are weapons that we can, we can use and exert authority with. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to hand over now to John, who's going to talk to us about using our authority as a weapon. So I'm just going to pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we can gather tonight in your name that name Jesus that is above every other name. And Lord, we're not just here to be, just to listen to a talk. Lord, we are here tonight to listen to you. And we ask now, Lord, that you would open our ears, open our hearts, open our eyes. Lord, we all, we are longing for, for, for change in this land, for change in ourselves. Lord, we're longing to see much more of your power across the nation, Lord, people saved. Um, healings, miracles, your glory, Lord. And, and so, Lord, as we, as we listen tonight, we ask that you would empower us. You would change us. You would fill us with your strength tonight through your word. Lord, we just pray for John that as he speaks, you would speak through him. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that right now you can just come upon him. You're already in him, Lord, but you could come and use him tonight as a channel to bring your precise words of wisdom and knowledge and impartation to us tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, John. Amen. So, Heath, do you want to uh, just um, mute? Okay. So, right. What, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about uh, it's just not working. Um, hang on. I'll just put it back in gallery. Okay. So we're going to talk about um, 
what what do we have to do to get godly authority and to flow in godly authority and one of the first things we've got to do is we've got to get knowledge um there there is no getting away from the fact that we need to have knowledge of who we are um of what we've got of of what we can do and what we have in, in, in that's been imparted to us by god so I, I just like to start the thing with um, 2 Peter 1, verse 3. And um, the scripture, it's, and I'll, uh, I'll read verse 2. In fact, it says, May grace, God's favor and peace, which is perfect, well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So it's talking there about precise knowledge. It's, 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 it's talking about knowledge that is far more precise than general knowledge. This is um, a, 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 a knowledge where you know piece by piece how everything fits together. And, and then in the, in the next verse it says, For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things, that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence and virtue. So again, it's it's looking at knowledge. And, you know, if, if you carry on reading down here, I'll just read a couple more verses. It says, uh, verse 4, By means of these he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises, so that through them you may escape from the moral decay, the rottenness and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust and greed and become sharers and partakers of the divine nature. So uh, the, 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 the great promises that are there um, for us to know, we have to learn them. We have to learn what is involved here. What is it that uh, we need to do? You know, you think of Romans 12, um, and and verse two, well, it, it says there: be not partakers or of, of this of, of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. So again, it, it's 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 looking at the um, the transformation that is required in our minds um, through knowledge, and that knowledge that we get of God. It enables us to know precisely and perfectly his will and what we are to do. So really what we need to do is we need to look at everything that God's given us, and then we need to grow in knowledge and grow in understanding. And verse, verse 5 says here, For this reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian excellence, um, Christian energy, sorry, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. So just in, in these few verses, just saying knowledge, 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 knowledge. So that's, it's good for us to know what it is that we call to do and what we, what, uh, what we have and, and who we are. And, and then from there, we can start looking at um, what has God done, and we can look at um, flowing in authority in our lives. Okay, so let's let's just move now to another verse. Um, let's just go to um, we're going to go to uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one. Right, and I'm I'm going to read from verse seventeen or verse sixteen. Verse 16 says, but I'm just going to read down to the end of the, the, the end of the, the, the passage here, the end of the paragraph. It says, do not cease to give thanks for you. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. See, there it's speaking the same. But here, we are actually asking God for that knowledge. And God is releasing that knowledge to us. And that, 
that is the job of the, the Holy Spirit, is to teach us. Okay, so it says then, um, verse 18, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, um, his set-apart ones. And there again, it says, you can know and understand the hope to which you are called. All right, so let's carry on reading now. And it says, and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. And that is power, resurrection power is in us. And it says it's the power of God that is in and for us who believe. So you have to believe. Now, belief is, is some believing is, is a choice. Faith is a different thing because when, when you are told something, you can choose to believe it or not to believe it. But what happens is as you believe, you then move into, as you hear the word and as you study the word over and over again, you, you get faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. That's in um, Romans 10 verse 17. Okay, so it says here um, that you can know and understand the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And that power that, that was uh, used at that stage to, to raise Jesus from the dead, you can imagine the devil and every demon in hell was um, fighting against God, and they were um, assuming that they had, you know, they've got Jesus now. They've crucified him they've got him he's in he's in hell and uh you know they are gloating and doing the thing and that power of god then overcame them at that point and it, it raised christ from the dead but it not only raised him it raised us as well we'll have a look see just now across in ephesians 2 verse 6 where it says that we are raised with him okay so it says um when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, um, okay, in the heavenly in heavenly places, and it says here it's that Jesus is far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. So Jesus is really um, exalted, um, as, as, as you can see here. And verse 22 says, And he has put all things under his feet, and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body, verse 23, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself so god has raised jesus up and he, he's um exalted him above every power every name every uh, as it says here in this age and the age to come and why why did christ have to do that because he did that for the body the the, the body is he's the head of the body and, you know, you, you think of bodies, our bodies, we've got heads, and we don't have a separate body. Um, our body and our head are, are one. They're the same thing. They're together. And so it says here that Jesus has been raised far above rule and authority and power, and he's put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church. And that's a headship exercise throughout the church. Okay, so let's let's just have a look at um, a, a, a different scripture. Uh, that'll be one Corinthians twelve. Let's just get there. Oh, I just want to read that. One Corinthians twelve. It says here in verse twelve. It says, "For just as the body, as a unit, 
and uh, it, it, just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts and all the parts though many form one body so it is with christ the messiah the anointed one okay and if we look across in verse 27 it says here so that's the thing it's speaking about christ being the body and we are the body we are members of the body okay so it says here now now you collectively are christ's body and individually sorry that's verse 27 of 1 corinthians 12 and individually you're members of it, each part severally and distinct, each with its own place and function. So it says you collectively are Christ's body. So um, we are Christ corporately and individually we are parts of Christ. So we, we've got to understand that. Um, you know, that's what I'm speaking about how you know we have to have knowledge of our, our our function and our position in god and the 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 fact is that the church universal the universal church the corporate church is christ it's christ's body okay and each each of us is individually is a member of of christ that's why it says here it says you collectively are christ's body that's uh, pretty clear and individually, you are members of it. Okay, so just say this to yourself now. Just say, I am a member of Christ's body. I am a member of Christ's body. And that means that Christ has, has fill, filled us. He's filled us totally with himself. And, you know, um, as Christians, as such, we we are are spirit beings. We we not natural beings. We're spirit beings, and we have been um, joined to Christ um, in 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 death and raised up with Him in 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 His resurrection. And we are His body. And if you think of Galatians two verse twenty, Paul says there that he says I'm crucified in Christ. And, and I don't live, but it's Christ in me who lives. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we, we are Christ, members of Christ. That's what we are. And so when we look here and, and we see the um, just the amazing things that have happened to Jesus and how he's been exalted and how he's been lifted up on high, then we've got to realize wow, there's something here that I've got to get a hold of, that I personally have got to get hold of, that this authority and this, this great power that, that God has exerted in Christ is there for my benefit. It's for me to actually um, to, to, to rise up and to take authority over the enemy. Because it says here, um, uh, verse 20. 21 it says jesus has been exalted far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age and in this world but also in the age and the world which are to come and and then it says and he has put all things under his feet so Sorry, the feet what scripture is that uh, sorry, it's, it's Ephesians 1, verse 21 and 22 again. I'm just looking at that. I'm probably just going to go over and over this so that um, we can catch it. But the, the point is that Jesus Christ has been raised like that above every name, above every uh, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in the world and, and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are yet to come. And it says God has put all things under his feet. Okay, so that's all under God's feet. That's under Jesus' feet. Now, we are raised in Christ. Let's just go across to Ephesians 2 verse 6. It says, he raised us up together with him. And made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere, 
by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. So God has given us joint seating with Christ, and he, he literally raised us at the same time, even though, you know, uh, remember, God is outside of time, so that there's, there's no time. It's not like, oh, 2,000 years ago, Jesus, and this and that. No, that was an event that took place. The, the crucifixion was outside of time. And so we are outside of time and, and in terms of eternity and the, the eternal part of our lives. And uh, so, yeah, it says here in verse 20 again, I'm back in, back in Ephesians 1. It says, uh, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And so we are seated in Christ, and, and Christ at the right hand of God. So we are, in, at, 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 we are also in the right hand of God. And we are in the power. That's where the power is. The power is at the right hand of God. And Jesus Christ is there. So um, the fact that we are raised up together with him and uh, sitting down with him, is just amazing. Okay. So let's just think now, what does this mean? It means that we as individuals, as believers, uh, as co corporately and individually, we are, we are part of, we are Christ in, in, corporately, but we are members of Christ individually. We are above because we are seated at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus. And he has the authority at, uh, at the highest level, um, and we are seated above with him, in, in him, at the right hand of God. So let's just look at, um, let's, let's, let's just look at Matthew 18, verse 18. I, I just want to show you how Jesus was given all authority um, which uh, which happened. So it's, it's 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse 18. Okay, so this is when they were down on the earth and Jesus was on, on the earth, but just have a look here what, what happened. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then what did he do? He said, go then and make disciples. He said, yeah, go in my name and make disciples. So in other words, he conferred and he um, delegated that authority to the apostles. And it says, uh, make, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days. So Jesus is with us, and the authority is with us. Um, another place that we can see this authority that is released through, through Christ is in Luke, Luke 10. Let's just have a look. Luke 10 verse, uh, verse 1 says, After this, the Lord chose and appointed 70 others and sent them out ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where him, he himself was about to visit. And he said to them, The harvest is abundant. There is much ripe grain, but the farm hands are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And he, he, he goes on, he tells them to go, and they stay in, in different houses, and they, they bless. But they were to heal the sick, they were to raise the dead, and they were to basically operate in the authority of his name. And then in Luke 10, verse 19, he, he, he says that, um, that, that, it says, well, verse 17, in fact, said, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan falling like a lightning flash from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power the enemy possesses. And nothing shall in any ways harm you. Now, that is a blessing 
that God, that Jesus gave to the church, um, the, to, to the early one. But if you look at, at the beginning of Ephesians, if we go to Ephesians now, Ephesians 1 verse 3, it says here, it says, may blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Every single spiritual blessing. So if you read through the Old Testament, the New Testament, wherever you read, that if there's a, if there's a blessing there, that's ours. And that is given in the Spirit. So we, again, have to recognize that we are spirit beings and that we uh, communicate with God by our spirits, and then the blessings are imparted to us. So we've got to appropriate the blessings, and, and we've got to see them manifest in our lives. Okay, so the blessing of uh, Luke 10 verse 19 is ours as well. The, the, the power of God has given us, and, and also nothing shall in any ways harm us. So, again, just to, to, to emphasize what, we, what we're saying is, we've been given authority uh, in Christ Jesus, which is his name, and we've been given authority over all the power of the enemy, um, every, every name that can be named in the earth, on the earth, above the earth and heaven, and we have authority in this world and in the world to come. So we have all authority over the enemy, and nothing shall in any ways harm us. Okay, so that's, that's what we need to do. And we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Right, so now let's, let's just have a look at Colossians. We can go to Colossians chapter 1. Just to have a look there. Okay, so I'm going to read from verse 12. It says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion, which is the inheritance of the saints. See, this you have to know what your inheritance is. And this, this here is part of what it is. It says, God's holy people in the light. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And that, that is the, 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 the born again process that God has literally drawn us out of the kingdom of darkness and he's transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So, and it says he's delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the, the, the dominion of darkness. So, we are out of the kingdom of darkness, and we are in the kingdom of the Son of His love. And let's just have a look now further here. Uh, just go over to chapter 2 of Colossians. Yeah, verse 9 says, For in Him, that's in Jesus, the whole fullness of, of deity, the Godhead continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him. You are made full and you've come to fullness of life. In Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full, full spiritual stature. And he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. There's nothing missing in you. You know, um, some people think, wow, there's, there's things missing in me, but it's because they don't know that they are full of the Godhead. They have, they've got the Godhead in them. They've got the Spirit in them. They've got uh, God the Father um, and God the Son living in them. And um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I, I read those scriptures and I, I just think my, you know, my head just buzzes. I think, wow, how can that be true? And yet that's what it says there. So we have the fullness of, of deity, of the Godhead living in us. Okay. And if, if we look at, um, 
verse 13, it says, you were dead, who, who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God brought to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our transgressions. Okay, so he's, he, he's basically um, totally reconciled us to God and he's brought us to life from that place of darkness and he's brought us into Christ and we are members of Christ now. And have a look here at verse 15 of Colossians 2. It says, God disarmed the principalities, the powers that were ranged against us. And that, that is, um, you know, the, uh, the devil and, and his uh, minions, they had power. They had a lot of power before uh, uh, the, the crucifixion, before the resurrection of God. And um, this was taken away from them. This is another thing here. It says, that, uh, it says, God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross. So it means that we don't have the kind of opposition that maybe our forefathers had or people before Christ was uh, raised again from the dead. Um, we... We just have um, dominion and power. Basically, the devil now tries to, 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 to block people's thinking, and he tries to, to fool people to, to, to get the authority. But we have authority over him. Okay. Um, we, let, me, let me just go back to Ephesians 1. It says, it says, uh, okay, which he exerted when he raised him from the dead and received him his own right hand. Uh, okay, so verse 21, this is what we've got. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. And that, that, that is the, the, the authority that we have because Christ Jesus has given us his name and his name has been exalted above every other name. If, if we just look at Philippians, just go over the page. Sorry, I've got so many scriptures. Philippians 2 verse 9. Okay, so it says Philippians 2 verse 9 says, Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is the name that we've been given, the name of Jesus. He's conferred his name onto us, and he said, go ahead. Just step out in the authority that I've given you. And the authority that he's given us is over principalities and powers. It's, it's over so many things. Um, I've, I've basically uh, made a list here of some of the things that uh, we, we've We've used that name in, in, in years gone by, but um, the, the one thing that happened uh, 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 when, when my daughter was very young, she was, uh, well, she was a baby, really. She was walking, and she had a, a piece of chocolate cake, and she took it outside, and she was walking around. She dropped it, and then she picked it up again um, after a time, and she put it in her mouth again, but it had dropped into a... a, a, a a nest of ants and these were like angry ants they were like red ones and they they went all over her face and all down her throat and everywhere and we heard her screaming and thought oh what's going on and then we saw the ants we thought how can we get the ants out of her mouth they're biting her and so i i eventually just shouted i said in jesus name let go go to the ants 
and instantly they all let go and she she was um uh, totally fine it was like she uh, she she hadn't dropped the cake into the hands but that that was quite traumatic for us and um yeah so I, I was just thinking about some of the other things that have happened in, in my life with uh, authority. Um, there was a, a lady uh, in Portugal uh, who had arthritis right through her body, and she was like really battling to move. And so I've, 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 I rebuked the, the demon of arthritis, and she was instantly totally delivered. And she was jumping and shouting and shrieking and carrying on. And um, I think she, she must have been about maybe 60, maybe a bit, a bit younger. I don't know. But she was free, totally free. And then um, probably about three, four weeks later, it was all back again. The arthritis was back. And it was because when I was in... In, in, in the position where I could speak to her and I could exercise authority, that, that, that demon left. But then when she was by herself, she didn't understand about her authority and she didn't understand about the, the release you, 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 you can walk in and keep. You can, she should have kept that healing and she let the healing go because the, um, the uh, the demon came back and knocked on the door and said, "Oh, you know, uh, oh, huh. you know, she she felt a little ache or a little pain, and she didn't worry about it. But then it got more and more and more, and then eventually it 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 it, it took over again. And I, I I know she she was like really badly affected. I've heard. I, I haven't seen her again, but um, that is because she didn't know." of her authority in Christ Jesus. She didn't know that Jesus had given her his name, that he had given her authority um, over the powers of, of the enemy and over everything that would come against her. So uh, that was quite sad. Um, yeah, and, and another thing that happened was, um, I'm, I'm just telling you some of the things that I've done. Um, because um, I, I think it's useful. You've got to understand that the authority of God is the same for everybody. It doesn't, it's not that I have more authority than you and you have less authority than, or more authority or, you know, it, it, it's not. It, it's, it's the least in the, in the body of Christ has the same authority as the greatest in, in the body of Christ. It's just maybe that someone um, in, in the body of Christ would know some people know more about authority than other people, but the actual authority in God is exactly the same. He's no respecter of persons. So I'm, I'm just telling you these things that I did, but you can do the same um, if you uh, set out to do them. So um, let's have a look here. Yeah, um, we were in a, a church service um, in uh, Hillcrest. That's in, um, um, it, it's near, it's near Kloof somewhere. Um, and a man, he, he was an elderly man, but he, he just dropped dead. He, he, well, he dropped, he, he dropped. And then the medics ran over and then I, um, I, I saw that going on and I watched it a bit. Then I thought oh, I better get a bit closer and go and see what's going on. And they were shouting, oh, he has no pulse, no pulse, no pulse, no pulse. And so they were doing artificial respiration on the man. And then they picked him up and they carried him into another room and they carried on working there. But I, I think he was probably dead. Um, and uh, eventually I, I said, no, well, this is a spiritual problem. So I leaned over him and I said, in the name of Jesus, you spirit of death, get out. And um, it was amazing. His, his, his pulse came back, his eyes opened, and he, he got up on his, on his feet and he went back into the service. And um, that just shows, like with, with, with authority and with, uh, with uh, some sort of understanding of, of, of what's going on, you, you can actually do that. Um, I've, I've, I had an, a, another case. Uh, I'll just tell you one more. 
when I've got the whole stack of cases here. Yeah, um, we we had um, a lady um, in, uh, we had a healing uh, meeting here in Balsall Common, and this lady had a, a demon sitting on a on her neck here, and it, it 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 had long claws, and I could see the claws was sticking right through the um, through the skin and out the other side, and it was stuck on the back of her spine, um, holding on there. And she she basically asked for uh, he, uh, healing from a, a back pain, and and I saw this thing. I, I actually suddenly saw this thing looking at me, sitting on her, and. Um, that, that I, I don't know how that happens, but it, it just happened. And I just suddenly saw, and um, I was able to rebuke it. And the thing fell on the ground, and it shrieked and carried on. And she fell down, and she shrieked, and and then the thing was uh, delivered. It, it, it left her, and it, it left the, the 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 building, and she was totally healed from her back that she'd suffered with uh, for quite a few years by that stage. So. This, this is just some kind of what, what, what we can do. Um, we've been given authority and we can do it. So, you know, we, we, we've got to take authority over many situations. Um, you know, we can speak. Um, I was think, thinking about um, in uh, Matthew 16, verse 18, is it? Yeah, verse 19, Matthew 16, verse 19. Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be what is already bound in heaven. Okay, so in other words, you know, we, 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 we can't just go wild like that, but we can if we see that um, there, there's um, good things that uh, come from heaven that need to be done on the earth, we can loose them in, in, in the in the earth and they'll be loose in the heavens here and we can also bind them and so he says whatever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful on earth earth must be what is already bound in heaven and whatever you loose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven and that is something that every single one of us has got we've got the keys of the kingdom you know, um, Jesus, speaking of John the Baptist in Matthew 11, 11, said, you know, of men born of woman, there's none greater than John the Baptist. And, and um, he says, but he who is least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. And that is us. We are, we are in the kingdom and we have authority because, um, you know, you, it doesn't matter where you are in the body of Christ and how you fit in. You, you can be the skin on Jesus' feet. Everything is under his feet. And we have authority over it. So we, we must be aware of, 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 of that fact, that we have been given the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever we bind on earth, is bound in heaven, and whatsoever we loose on the earth is loosed in the heaven. And I, I remember um, just a few years, well, it's quite a few years ago, Heather, Heather uh, it's when Shelley was still at primary school, so it's quite a few years ago. Um, but Heather uh, was at the primary school, and um, there were teachers there, and teachers, uh, they, they, were, they were not, they, they were basically, um, uh, un unhealthy teachers, <laughs> you know, we didn't like them teaching our, our, our little girls. So um, Heather and the other moms, um, they, uh, they, they bound the, the behavior of these teachers at, at the school. And the whole school, it, it was like really quite bad um, what had happened to, to, to the teachers. And over a period of about two years, Gradually, they all left and they changed, and the head, the headmistress of, of the school changed, and the, the 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 school was a different place because she had been given the keys of the kingdom, and so she could bind what she didn't like, and she could bind what was ungodly, 
and she could loose what was godly in that school. And so that that actually happened, and uh, that school was changed for the for the for the for the better. And then by then, uh, our daughter um, left the school eventually. Yeah, she she went into standard five, and then she left. So. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Okay, so that, that is authority. That is authority. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I've still got a bit of time there. Yeah, there's there's more um, in in the scriptures about Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. I mean, let's just have a look at Hebrews one. So, Jesus earned his 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 right. Okay to that to that name he, he was given that name because he humbled himself and um he was obedient unto death so jesus earned his right and it's it says here just looking at some of what jesus is about it says in verse 3 of hebrews 1 it says he is the sole expression of the glory of god the life being the outrain uh, of or radiance of the divine and he is the perfect imprint and very image of god's nature upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Okay, and then um, it says here, uh, verse 4, uh, it, oh, well, I'll, just read, I'll keep reading, it says, when he, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high, taking a place and rank by which he himself became as much superior to the angels as the glorious name which he has inherited is different from and more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you, established you in an official sonship, and kingly with uh, a, 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 an official sonship relation with kingly dignity. And again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. Okay, and then, it says in verse 13 of Hebrews 1, it says, Besides, to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, associated with me in my royal dignity, till I make your enemies a stool for your feet? And we must understand that we are seated in Christ at the right hand of God. So that same word applies to us. That um, he says, Sit at my right hand associated with me in my royal dignity till I make your enemies a stool for your feet. And Jesus has exalted. He's been exalted and he's exalted us. And that, that's just a free gift. That's the gift of grace that um, applies to us. Okay. Sure. So, I, I think in um, uh, just just in closing now, let's let's just have a look again at Ephesians one and Ephesians two. So, Ephesians one says God says pray always pray pray and ask. And that's something that I've done. I've just asked God, I've asked God and asked God and asked God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I've asked him and asked him and asked him. And eventually what has happened is I've started having dreams and I've started having um, um, visions and I've started having uh, revelations and things revealed to me in, 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 in the scripture. Okay, so... Um, Let's let's have a look here now. It says in, in chapter 2, verse 1. Okay, so remember at the end of ch uh, chapter 1, it says, which is his body, uh, 
the, 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 the church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. And it says, and you he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins, in which at one time you walked habitually. So you were following the course and fashion of this world. You were under the sway and the tendency of the present age, following the prince of the power of the air. And it, it's, it, it's still the, the demon spirit that still works in the sons of disobedience and in the rebellious. And we need to bind his work. Okay. And um, verse four says, God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved and delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Okay. And this is, and he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor and his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. And this is it here. It says, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving but it is a gift of God. So God has gifted us into a place of authority. And God has said, he's given us the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in the heavens. And whatsoever we loose on the earth is loosed in the heavens. So I think that's sort of more or less what, what I have to say um, about it. It's just that we, the church, have great, 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 great authority. And we are the body of Christ. The head, the head is seated up in heavenly places. We are down on earth. And the, the Lord needs us as much as we need him. You know, um, you, you cannot say, oh, God, um, uh, I need you. <laughs> and, he, and he, the Lord, says he needs us. He needs his body because we are his body and we are the expression of his um, power and his um, authority on the earth. And we are, um, we, th that's why God hasn't taken us out of the earth. He's left us here to do his works and to, to extend his kingdom. And I, I think that the more that the sooner we see that um, that that we have this authority, that the church is going to rise up, and the church is going to get about doing what it should be doing, and it's going to be healing the sick, and it's going to be delivering the, the 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 people from demons, and it's going to be, you know, just doing whatever it needs to do. It's going to be doing the works of Jesus, you know. The, the works that he said that we would do if we believe in John 14, verse 12. So I, I think that what we need is we need to just wake up and we need to be asking God continually for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in our lives. Okay, so that's something that I think that um, you must ask him for every day in your life. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it, Tith. Okay, you, I, I sort of, um, we were going to do a, a breakup, but I, I don't think there's enough time now, unless we just, we do it quickly. Um, 
Okay, are there any questions? John covered a lot. Yeah. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Simon, yeah. Um, yeah, how do you, how do you, just in brief, how do you approach an area that's, that's got such problems uh, in prayer? Like a place that's infested with drugs and crime, for example. How do you, uh, how would you go about that? I think that you, you you take it step by step as, as you go. Um, for instance, when we came into Balsall Common here, this place was riddled with witchcraft, and okay, and and drug. There was there, there was drug uh, use amongst the 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 teenagers here, and um, we actually um, started praying. We did prayer meetings. We we went out on the streets. We uh, we we did various things out there. And uh, gradually, the, the place changed over about, I don't know, maybe one, two years, say, eh? uh, Heath, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, for instance, in, in the school here, the, the, there, was, there was no um, SRC or Students Representative Council um, you know, for, for religion. Um, and by, by the time that Shelley left school, that thing was strong. It was pumping it was it, it it and and people were putting witchcraft signs all over the place and that stopped so um yeah i i, I think you just got to do it slowly simon you you've got to infiltrate you you've got to uh, start off one by one and just start uh, allowing god to uh, to to extend the, the the ground that you got and to to extend the the atmosphere of of heaven can I say something? I think that's, Simon, that's exactly how revival starts. It starts with one person. Like if you think of those stories of Lewis and um, even even um, even in Wales, it was just a few people who got together to pray. And then, but there was a unity amongst them and they, 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 they began to just call out to the Lord. And then gradually the atmosphere was changed. And then um, things began to transform the community began to transform um i mean that also happened to us in pine town when that you know long ago where we were praying for the whole nation and um there was the possibility of a of a, of a, a very severe and violent bloodbath and as we prayed but in the spirit things began to change and actually our the community where the church was based also it, it changed not only in the spirit but in the physical because it was it was the the area was quite a rough area and after a while um we were told by one of the elders there that the police came to visit the church and they said you know we used to have to come here virtually every single day and we we find now we we don't we hardly ever come anymore what what's happened and it was because of the the prayer and i think it is praying as we've been doing praying with with um authority praying with focus and if it's a, if it's a specific area that you've got in mind like i know jan and sheena have got their eye on havering where there's been awful trouble with with um in the with the use i think ask the lord for some other people in that area even if it's two two or three and begin to focus your prayers like laser beams on the area and god will he will honor that and he will begin to change the area i don't know does that help i can't see you yeah it does thank you okay um any other questions can I ask another question to do with an area? Yes. When I've studied up on revivals, when the church of an area gets together to pray in unity across denominations and everything, God outbreak, there seems to be an outbreak of revival. So the way we've been taught to pray and the way we love to pray is the way that John teaches us to pray, to pray in the spirit first, get what the Holy Spirit's saying, travail, do all the things that John's taught, but that's not going to go down with every denomination. In fact, not, in, not even all of them believe in praying the Spirit. So have you done that? Have you got together 
interdenominationally and how do you conduct the pre meetings if you do that john do you want to answer or do you want me to answer yeah well um you know uh, what i found is um it says that in psalm 133 it says that where there's unity the lord commands his blessing but um there, there's a a, 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 a uh, a situation where you 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 go above unity and you go into oneness and that comes through uh, the spirit the spirit of god brings oneness so i i think that the best thing would be to to actually uh, get the 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 prayer and the spirit going and then gradually add those people on uh, little by little by little and um let them sense the oneness that there is in god and then uh that that normally helps. Then people can uh, um, can get along, even if they they got different ideas. When there's oneness in the spirit, and can I can I can I just add on something there? Yeah. I think what you have to do then is um, you see the people that you're praying with at the moment, praying in the spirit. You see yourselves as intercessors on behalf of the whole area. So you might not. Yeah. You might not include everybody because um, that it's just not it just doesn't work. But if you are intercessors, um, you 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 both your role as intercessors is both releasing light and making a space and also pushing back the darkness. And as you live by the spirit and as you just continue to do that, continue to do that with your focus on the area, the Lord will lead you and He will um, He will bring in those who can do the job. Not everyone. Uh, can do we should all be able to do the job but not not all not everyone is sort of ready to do the job but but you are praying on behalf of the whole um area and mm. the other thing is that there will be different levels of prayer meetings as well you know there will be intercessory prayer meetings where you're praying in the spirit but maybe there's other kinds of meetings that you could have as well and to be open yeah. to to that Okay. Angelo, do you want to say something? You look like you do. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe one more question or comment. Gee, you're all quiet this evening. Gosh. Heather, you wanted to show us a clip. Yeah, it was... Um, it, it was well i can show it to you i can show it to you in the end i want to do one thing um before it it was just like a fun thing about a, a policeman directing the traffic and just the authority that he's got i will i will show it but um let's just i think let's end by doing what john's been talking about tonight um matthew 18. We've, it's very familiar and actually we i think most of us, many of us use this, but let's just do it because I think that we we need to be aware of, sorry, I'm paging through here. Um, in this season, we just need so much to be aware of our authority. So Matthew 18, I truly, I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. So to choose a, a, a situation where we can forbid and declare to be improper that thing but it must be part of god's will so we must know that it is god's will and whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven so um let's just take a situation so um i know that let's let's do simon was talking about his um what is it is it great yarmouth simon yeah so uh, yeah somebody was a lad was stabbed to death yeah and jan and jan and um sheena have had the same situation in in their area uh just in the last week it hasn't it been so let's take that situation of the the young people it is that it is young people isn't it Am I am I right? Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't. All right. Maybe Simon, just very briefly describe the situation, and then we're going to declare, we're going to bind and loose, and we're going to um, 
uh, do what it says here. We're going to forbid and declare something, and we're going to then lose something. Okay, well, it's dr drugs and gangs around here from all over the world. Yeah. Okay. So, what can we say confidently is the Lord's will in that situation? Anybody? Salvation. Fantastic, Angela. Thank you. He wants salvation of the people and he wants his light to, to be spread amongst those people. What else? Loving one another. Loving one another. Um, yes. But do you think those people with the gangs, do you think they are capable of that? Yeah, I think they love they love each other in the gang, but they see themselves as against the rest of the world. Yeah. So um, how would we, what could we forbid and what could we lose? No blood sacrifice. Sorry, blood sacrifice. Yes, no blood on the ground. Yeah. All right. Let's, um, I want to just go back, Peter. What could we, we, if you're talking about that, what could we forbid and what could we lose? I think we could forbid that they, uh, the wrong interpretation of love, that it should be love for your neighbour and your neighbour extends wider than just the gang. Okay. And yeah, I think that, that would that okay. cover us both. Okay, we, we, vote. we haven't got a lot of time because, I mean, we could spend an hour on this. So what we're going to do, we're going to go with Angela's, we know the number one thing that God wants is salvation. Above, because if we don't have salvation, there's no healing, there's nothing else. So we're going to, we're going to um, uh, forbid spirits of darkness that prevent salvation, so we're going to use light, illumination, whatever. And then we're also going to do uh, Peter's thing about um, just binding um, rejection or um, uh, just the hatred and using love and under, a, a good understanding. So I think just a few of us, um let's just let's just bind and loose for those situations and then we can so we focus on we're focusing on these areas of violence in Havering and in Great Yama. So Lord, we just bring these situations to you tonight. And Lord, we know oh Father, we, we know that it is your will that every person is born again, is saved out of darkness. Lord, it's not your will for darkness to reign. It's not your will for the horror of murder and the trauma and the tragedy of drugs and isolation and rejection and all these things, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that tonight we can come in unity and strength and agreement, empowered by you and in authority that's given by you and by the name of Jesus, Lord, we can forbid certain things and we can loose some things for these situations okay so come on everyone just jump in you forbid and you loose angela go all right i forbid the spirit of, of, of oppression to continue to use people in the wrong way lord we just loose your light we loose your love lord we thank you your love sent you sent you to the cross and your love brings forth that salvation. So, Lord, we seek now to loose your love into salvation, into the hearts and minds of those who are struggling at this point in time and who do not yet know you because of the spirit of rebellion. Thank you, Lord. That It's all in your hands. Amen. 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 The Lord, I just want to declare empathy, Lord, over the gang leaders, over the gang, over the, the drug users. Uh, empathy, Lord, for others, Lord, that they will begin to understand, Father God, that other people are affected by their actions and not just themselves. And we declare that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. John? Yeah. Uh, me. You. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Father, I thank you that we bind, we, we bind and we forbid the lawlessness. We forbid, Lord, the violence. We forbid um, the um, 
the um <laughs> spirits of darkness yeah yeah we forbid you in jesus name we take authority over you satan we say you loose those people in jesus name and we take authority over uh, um the 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 thoughts their, their um, actions in jesus name amen 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 peter do you want to declare something release or bind yeah so we just declare that people that those who are causing all this trouble in great yarmouth and, and at havering lord that people will come aside your people people who know you will come alongside and show these people real love real care that they in some way powered by you lord that we just declare that they will the local christians will have that power to bring love and care to these people that they will see that you that through someone else actually loves them and will bring them back to you so we just declare this now in your name lord jesus amen okay so thank you lord lord i want to release over those areas your love your light and now as, just just as a group as i'm doing that from your belly see a river lift your hands or whatever physical thing you can do but see a river of god's life and light the resurrection power of jesus christ lord we just release that over these areas your glory lord your light lord that is so far and above the darkness we just release it over those areas we release it over the minds of those those gang people and those many young people who are bound we release your light lord we say thank you lord that it is your love and your light and your glory your resurrection power that can deliver them we release the gospel the good news of jesus christ over that area we say lord the name of jesus over havering the name of jesus over great yarmouth we pull down we bind the spirits of darkness we say no more murder in the name of Jesus. No more gangsters rushing around with alcohol and, 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 um, and drugs in the name of Jesus. So we bind those spirits of addiction, those spirits of greed, those spirits that would darken and murder and kill and destroy. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and your banner of light and life and abundance and goodness. Jesus, Jesus Christ, our King over great Amen. Yarmouth and Amen. over Havering. We bless Amen. you, Lord. Lord. We bless you, Lord. Yeah, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, I know it's over time now, um, and I, I didn't look for the share screen. So <laughs> next week, we were going to do um, the Weapon of Joy, and it was um, a visiting a lady who who did the most outstanding sermon that we heard on joy but she can't do it anymore so what we're going to do is swap around a bit and next week we'll look at some prayer strategies um uh so so we'll do we'll come back to the joy at the end and for homework this week i think Can you stop recording sorry stop yeah. recording sorry yeah.